Anybody else feel blessed this morning that we have a Savior that did not disregard us? Amen. This time of moving towards Jesus that we've been doing um, has been very special to me. There's a lot of stuff going on in our family as a church, as a church family. There's, there's people who have been ill um, and sick. There's people who are rejoicing. There's people who are sad and mourning. But together, we're, we're stronger. Amen. Together, we have people that pray for us, that lift us up. Uh, those who are doing well can lift up those who are, are not. Just as the, the Bible talks about us being one body and protecting one another. <laughs> I love baby problems, you guys. You know why I love baby problems? Because it means we've got babies! I want a baby. Like, I want a grandbaby so bad. <laughs> <laughs> you choose that? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. no. I am totally okay with being called grandpa. How many grandpas we got in the room? Right. Yeah. Grandpa's are the best, right? Yes. You guys just sugar those things up and send them home? Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah. yeah. <laughs> So this this time this time together just it's like this in my mind it's this journey uh, towards the manger is what it is and so we're remembering these different aspects of who Jesus is in our life and there's something that is um, really good about stopping there's a lot of input in our lives isn't there like we're importing stuff into us from like all over the world. We're, we do imports. That's all of our jobs. Like we just import information from and things that are happening all over the world. And so there's a massive amount of input that's going on in our lives. And sometimes it's too much. Sometimes it's just a lot. And it's good to just quiet that space. Does anybody else's mind get busy every once in a while? Right? This, it just feels like it's just moving at high RPMs all the time. And sometimes it's just good to just quiet your mind space and really just focus in on that road to the manger, that road to Jesus, that who Jesus is, what he did in our life, and just and just quiet that space and, and, and cut off the inputs that are going on in our life. So, so there's something very restful about stopping, isn't there? Um, I, when I, even as I'm saying this, I'm thinking to myself, I can use that kind of rest. Anybody else use that kind of rest in their life? Where they just, I have a moment of quiet, and it's just hard to find that spot. Savannah's like, yeah, I don't, haven't had quiet in a little while. <laughs> Kids make it hard, but, uh, but in Advent, we've been, the, the first week of Advent, we talked about hope. And it was the hope of a coming Savior, and it was kind of a look at some, some Old Testament perspective of, of the coming and the expectation that God's going to move and, and looking forward to Jesus. And hope meaning that I'm going to wait on God. Uh, last week, we talked about the joy that comes with the birth of Jesus. And this week, we're going to talk about uh, the peace that Jesus brings. So I get to light another candle this morning. Holy sanctioned, and I have permission to do this. So. <laughs> All right. So we're going to talk about peace this morning. I want to read that scripture we read this morning again. It's Isaiah chapter 9, starting at verse 2. I love uh, the Old Testament scriptures, especially Isaiah, that talk about Jesus. There's something really neat about Isaiah's prophecies about Christ. It says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness. A light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased the, their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder, for as in the day of the Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. 
Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for the burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. This is a, 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 a scripture about the birth of Jesus. Before Jesus was ever born, this is a looking forward to this time when, when that, that yoke would be broken. For to us, a child is born, to us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. There's this coming of Jesus, and he's called the Prince of Peace. So what does that mean for us? What does this coming of Jesus, his kingdom, that he's established in our life, mean for us? And if you look at the beginning of the scripture, it talks a little bit about what happens when the King of the, the Prince of Peace's throne is established on earth. It says, a light is going to shine in the darkness. I, I love that descriptor, the, the people of the deep dark. A light is finally shining in the darkness. A shattering of the yoke that oppresses and the rod that strikes, release from bondage. What's the yoke of bondage that Jesus releases us from? What is that yoke of bondage that, that his coming, the Prince of Peace is coming, breaks off of our shoulders? It's that sin, right? It's that condemnation in our life. We're free from that. There's a freedom from that condemnation. <laughs> A burning of the articles of war, blood-soaked garments and tools of war to be burned. Why are you burning them? Because you don't need them anymore. The Prince of Peace has come. I think that the, the title Prince of Peace is one of my favorites for Jesus. It's such a powerful word and it means so much more than we think that it does. And that's been kind of the case for all these words when you really dive into them. Uh, you think you know what these words mean, but then you look at the Bible and what the Bible says about them, and you're like, wow, that's a powerful word. Yeah. <laughs> There's no peace there. He's, not, he's angry. <laughs> um, so when we think of the word peace, we think of a lack of fighting or a ceasefire or a lack of conflict. That's kind of our definition of peace. When you have peace, the, the fighting has stopped. But biblical peace is so much more than that. The, the Old Testament word for peace is shalom. Sh shalom. And shalom means more than a lack of conflict. Uh, shalom means wholeness and completeness. If two nations are fighting, shalom isn't just a stopping of the fighting. Shalom is that those two nations would come together in agreement and have a trade agreement or have an accord. That there would be healing between the conflict of those two nations. If a husband and wife are fighting, shalom is more than them just not talking to one another. Because <laughs> if you're not talking, you're not fighting, right? Maybe. But shalom means that a healing of that relationship. So when you have shalom in a relationship with your husband or your wife, it's more than just you guys have agreed to stop fighting, but that, that rift that's between you is healed and there's a wholeness. There's a shalom, there's a peace between you. It means that it's unbroken, that there's a wholeness, that it's complete. Okay, I have to say that um, when I was thinking of that part, I kind of was thinking of Jerry Maguire a little bit. You complete me. Sorry. <laughs> Me and my cheesy romance movies, right? So, so shalom is more than just not in conflict. But it's, but it's a wholeness. It's a coming together in, in, in unbroken completeness. It's, it's taking what is broken and mending it and making it whole again. And 
And I got to say that that's really important to me. Because I'm broken. I'm broken. I'm a broken person. And, and I'm, I'm in good company because I'm surrounded by a room full of people that are also broken. So this idea that Jesus is the, the, the prince of peace, that he's the prince of wholeness and completeness, is important to us because when we come to him, we don't have that in our life. We come to him in a broken state. There, there are things, there are things in my life that, that are broken that I don't even know about yet. Have you guys run into these?